Welcome, welcome, welcome. Joining you tonight, I am actually in my car. I am leaving the Shaka Khan concert. That's why I was not on at 11 because Shaka was getting it in. Oh my goodness. But I am here tonight, day number 12 of 29 Days of Love with yours truly, Dr. Sabrina, the success broker. And I want to go in tonight on the top five reasons why people fail at love. Oh my goodness. Top five reasons. First reason, coachability. People who lack the ability to take and implement feedback are going to fail. You have to be open to be coachable. You have to be open to listen more than you talk. You have to be able to have someone tell you something. How do you grow? How do you get better if can't nobody tell you anything? I believe that there's something happens right around 12, 13, but we don't want nobody to tell us nothing. We think we know something. And it only gets worse and it exacerbates when we get older because I believe that once you become a parent, once you become degreed, once you become a CEO and you're the leader, then it's hard for people to get to you and tell you something. So you have to be coachable, especially in the areas of love. Because if you're dealing with someone, if you're loved by and with someone, you have to listen to what they're saying their needs are, their desires are, their wants are, not just you. So you have to be able to stop and listen. So coachability is number one. You have to be coachable. So ask yourself, am I coachable? Can I take feedback? And the other thing that we do when we get feedback that we don't like, oh my goodness, we become defensive. We uh, shut the person off. We discount what they say. We may give more credence to how it's said instead of what is said and as big grown people we need to be able to separate how it's said from what is said because what i've learned is that sometimes people don't know how to say it ooh, ooh, but what they say it is valid is true so you want to make sure that you're coachable when it comes to your relationships and that's all relationships especially as parents because think about it what do you really learn how to parent you learn how to parent from the examples that you've had. Most times we don't go and get help on how to handle something with our kids until there's a problem, until there's an issue. We think we got it. We think we know it. We're gonna parent either the way that we were parent that we liked, or we're gonna do something totally opposite from the stuff that we didn't like. So you gotta be coachable. You gotta seek information and knowledge, especially in the areas of relationships and love. Number two reason. Mm, emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence is seen when people lack the ability to control and manage their own emotions, but secondly, to accurately assess the emotions of someone else. And so when you're in a relationship and you go from zero to 100, people can't say anything to you, you are so emotional, you're so sensitive, you can't control your emotions, that is a huge problem in relationships. But the second part of that is don't be the type of person that push people and push people till you don't push them over the edge. You know the old rap song. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. So you want to make sure that you are the type of person that not only can control your own emotions, self-police as I say, but then also you can read the other person and know when to step back, know when to stop pushing, know when to maybe shut it down, know when to, uh, for lack of a better term, just shut up. Don't say nothing else to the situation de-escalates so that you're not moving into a place that you can't return from. So it's important that you um, have emotional intelligence. And there are quizzes for that. So if you want to know what your emotional intelligence is, there are quizzes for that. If you email me at Sabrina, Sabrina, it's Sabrina at SabrinaJackson.com. I'll send you one. Uh, number three reason why people fail, oh my goodness, is motivation. Um, have you ever been in a situation in, in a relationship that you're just no longer motivated to do anything? You do just enough to get by. You don't do anything special. You do just enough. You come home. So you tell the person, you know, well, hey, I'm still with you. I'm still here. I, 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 
I haven't left you, so but you're not doing anything to make it better. You're not doing anything to um, make sure that your children's situations are better. You do just enough to get by. Mediocre mm -mm, is the enemy of great. And you should want all your relationships to be great. So make sure that you're motivated, you're excited, you're going to get information so that you know how to make it better. And the best information is to ask the person that you're dealing with, what do you need? What do you need from me? What do you like? How can I make you smile? Things of that nature. Number four is the temperament. Necessary. All oh, this is so huge because what I've learned is that opposites really do attract. And so you have to take the time to get to know the person that you are dealing with, whether that's your kids. I know it's for me. Uh, me and my two brothers came from the same house. Same two parents, went to the same church, had the same morals and values, and all three of us were real, <laughs> so different. So you have to spend some time getting to know the person as they are and not how you want them to be. Because you can't make anybody be anything that they don't want to be. You have to find out who they are, what they like, what they don't like, and then try to work together. And the way that you work together is with communication. So that temperament style is huge. And then the number five reasons why people fail is the skill sets, the knowledge that you don't go and learn nothing new. Oh my goodness, what is it about us in relationships that we don't feel that we can gain information, that we can learn something, that we can implement in our relationships? One of the number one reasons that people have troubles in their relationships is communication. So maybe you need to go and get a communications test and learn how your communication style is. What things do you need to do different? Are you a collaborator? Are you an agitator? Are you dominant? Find out who you are and then how do you learn to do it differently? How do you learn the skills necessary to make it work? Because I'm telling you, beloved, life is to be lived with people. God created us to be with each other, to love each other, to support each other, to be loving and kind and benevolent. And we have to do that and we do that more effectively when we learn the skills necessary to make it better. Well, beloved, top five reasons, coachability, emotional intelligence, motivation, temperament style, and skill set and knowledge necessary. Work on those, beloved, and you'll see your love life increase. Do better. Get better. I love you. I will be back here tomorrow, and tomorrow I will be here uh, at 11 o'clock. That is my plan. So I will see you tomorrow, beloved, and you can tune in for the rebroadcast at my YouTube page, Essentially Sabrina. Essentially, I love you. Take care.